Our addiction to fossil fuels and other forms of non-renewable energy concentrates is a disease that's destroying the fabric of our civilization, to say nothing about the health of our delicate ecosystem. Buckminster Fuller once said, we've wandered too far from the roots. Unregulated big businesses encourage mergers and acquisitions that result in monopolies supported by a lobby of highly paid lawyers. So what can us little people do? Well, we can gain some control over our wretched little lives by getting back to the roots and by making a more direct connection with the energy from the universe. Let's build our own solar heating systems and supplement our power requirements with a photovoltaic system. I won't be able to help you with that photovoltaic system, but trapping heat from sunlight is something I will be able to help you with. To facilitate the mounting process over a wide surface area, modular units are flush mounted on the roof. Large heat storage chambers may be constructed by joining a set of smaller tanks because one tank may not be enough for the array. Solar heat storage tanks may be made from discarded electric or gas tanks, and these tanks may be daisy chained together to increase the heat storage capacity. But wait! there are still other options. A storage tank may be made from plywood and 2 by 4s as long as you don't forget to line the wooden chamber with an EDPN waterproof film. There are many heat storage options available, but they all share a common concern that makes trapping solar heat possible. They trap hot water and return cold water to the collector. They do this by taking advantage of the natural ability of water to stratify layers of heat according to their temperature differentials. The water temperature inside an undisturbed drum will eventually reach equilibrium. In other words, the temperature of the water throughout the drum will eventually be the same. But what will happen if we add hot water? Hot water added to cold water will of course soon lose most of its heat to the surrounding water and all the water molecules within the drum will eventually reach a homogeneous temperature. But this process is gradual, and layers of heat stratification will form first. We know that hot water is lighter than cold water because hot, fast vibrating molecules occupy more space than cold, slow vibrating molecules. Tall drums intensify heat stratification by providing space for less dense molecules to migrate. Closed loop heat exchange coils within a drum minimize turbulence and increase heat stratification. Open loop drums with minimal turbulence can also be designed to encourage the heat stratification process. We know this may be accomplished by simply allowing hot water from the collector to enter the top of the drum and by returning cold water from the bottom of the drum. As long as the turbulence created by the incoming water is not excessive, we can expect layers of water to stratify according to their temperature differences. The process of heat stratification may also be favored by using multiple drums. Multiple drums are used to effectively process the incoming and outgoing water. As previously mentioned, heat storage systems can be modular, and individual drums may be daisy-chained together to increase the heat storage capacity. Once individual storage drums are daisy-chained together, they may be enclosed inside an insulated chamber, and household air may be blown across them to extract heat. This simplifies the construction and assembly of heat storage systems, and facilitates the combination of a domestic hot water system with a home heating system. I've developed four types of multi-drum modular heat storage systems. This one is used with a closed loop collector. It uses an input heat exchange loop and an output heat exchange loop inside each drum. This closed loop multi-drum domestic hot water system was built by Scott from Plattsburgh, New York. Open loop drain back and trickle down systems can also take advantage of the multi-drum heat storage concept as long as they are assembled to minimize turbulence. 
This is accomplished by minimizing the velocity of water passing through the storage drums while maintaining a healthy flow rate. Large diameter pipes may be used to do this. I've used two inch PVC pipes pressed through the top lids of plastic drums. The input pipes are only a few inches long but return dip pipes are four feet long to siphon cold water from the bottoms of the tanks. This method works fine as long as the connecting pipes are filled with water. Heat stratification pipes provide another method of connecting drums of water. To simplify the connection process, I modified a PVC pipe that would pass right through the rubber boots installed in the drums. The large holes drilled on the tops and bottoms of the PVC pipe were designed to minimize turbulence by minimizing the flow speed of the hot water entering the drums. It was my hope that the slow moving water would maximize heat stratification by allowing natural convection currents to carry hot water to the tops of the drums. In this experiment I used an 8 square foot collector to provide heat for a 5 gallon drum. Three probes were used to measure the three temperatures between 12.20 p.m. and 1.20 p.m. on a sunny day. Probe number one measures the water temperature entering the drum Probe number three measures the water temperature leaving the drum, and probe number two measures the water temperature at the top of the drum. From this graph, you can see the differential temperatures between the water in and the water out is about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and the differential temperature of the water at the top of the collector is about 5 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a small drum that uses a small collector but it still demonstrates how hot water stratification may be increased with a pipe like this. I must say my main concern about the heat stratification pipe has to do with the distance between the top of the pipe and the top of the drum. A tall drum means more room for heat stratification to take place, but it also means more mixing while the water travels the distance. More testing would be needed to properly evaluate the heat stratification pipe concept. But there is one more method of daisy chaining plastic drums that looks very promising. This method makes use of standard plumbing supplies such as PVC pipes, PVC elbows, and rubber boots. Rubber boots are installed in the holes drilled in the sides of the plastic drums. PVC connectors are passed through the rubber boots. Elbows and PVC extensions are then attached to the connectors. Notice that a pump is attached to the bottom extension of the last drum, and a large input pipe is used to catch hot water from the collector. By enclosing these drums inside an insulated storage vault, Heat may be tapped as needed by simply blowing air across the outer surface of the drums. A domestic hot water heat extraction system with PEX tubes inside the drums could also be included as part of the overall system. I am not suggesting that everyone recycle plastic drums to store hot water. At temperatures above 160 degrees Fahrenheit, these drums become soft and start to lose their shape. What I am suggesting is that heat losses at temperatures above 160 degrees Fahrenheit are great and excessively high temperatures are not necessary for home heating or domestic hot water requirements. Folks call me Maverick, yes I ain't too diplomatic I just never been the kind to go along Just avoiding confrontation For the sake of confirmation And I'll admit I tend to sing a different song Sometimes you just can't be afraid To wear a different hat If Columbus said you fly And this old world might still be flat Nothing adventure, nothing gang Sometimes you got to go against the grain Well, I've been accused Making my own rules There must be rebel blood Just running through my veins But I ain't no hypocrite Cause 
what you see is what you get And that's the only way I know to play the game Oh no, it took much ridicule for building this great art But after 40 days and 40 nights, he was looking pretty smart Sometimes it's best to brave the wind and the rain By having strength to go against the grave Share my point of view But they're worried if they're gonna sink or swim They'd like to buck the system But the deck is stacked against them And they're a little scared to go out on a limb But if you're gonna make a difference If you're gonna leave your mark You can't follow like a bunch of sheep You gotta listen to your heart Go busting in like old John White Sometimes you've got to go against the grave Adventure nothing 